Neat. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I hope you can. Um, 100 flags, here we are. I'm sure you've, uh, well, you're here, so you're listening and watching. Uh, we've got a bit of an issue. There was a film I was going to show, so I'm going to try and give you a bit of a background. Uh, my name's John Boucher. Um, I've been a photographer, community, uh, community, done an awful lot of community engaged work over the years. Over 25 years I've worked across so many disadvantaged communities, uh, often being the first point of contact. So I've, I've developed this whole approach. And basically I'm gonna not spill the beans because I'm not gonna tell everything, but what we're gonna hear talk about is related to um, the 100 years of centenary. Uh, and how I've used found objects that, um, oh, here we go, I'm sorry, excuse me, one second. Okay, thank you. So this is what it's about. A thread is a relic. And this is a, if you look at it, it's actually a corroded piece of metal, which has, corroded away and dropped and landed at uh, the base of a lamppost that I used to walk past um, every, twi well, twice a week walking, taking my son to school. Hi, Reg. Um, I think um, I, I, as well, we've got my maniac of uh, an assistant who gives me good advice, keeps me sane. <laughs> He's a quiet fella, but when he does speak, he's worth listening to. So I think we've got Rosemary Jenkinson with us as well. Um, hi, Rosemary, can you, are you there? Do I click here or something? Oh, here we go. There's Rosemary. Oh. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, John. Hi, John. Brilliant. You're a bit like uh, this. This great thing is like um, Tony Stark's Iron Man building this huge metal contraption, I think. But, Which um, one? Yeah. Do you want me to ask you a question at the start? Well, if you, uh, well, if you have to, go on then. Oh, go on. Yeah. I was, oh, about, film. Sorry, I just say I was going to show a film, and there's been an issue with that, so that would have established it. So basically, help me introduce myself. You're the woman for the job. Absolutely. That's why and it's all about this being the centenary. So you've done something for the centenary, which is. Uh, a provocative time at, at the best of times, really. And um, what is your thinking as a provocative artist and how it's about identity and how to deliver it to the local community in, in a non-offensive way or whatever? Or is it better to be provocative? What do you think? I mean, the issue, I mean, if you've read, obviously, the, um, the, the bump that we put out is, uh, is quite clear about of it um, as, uh, as, a, as an artist with a 25 year career um, and working in such um, difficult environments, um, you become um, conscious of the sensitivities of even the possession of the photos and that ability and being able to take those photos. So when I started looking at these artifacts, these found, gifted and retrieved flags, um, it became about how, I mean, it was at the time of, I mean, it's over 10 years. So even before the flag protest and all the stuff that came around that, um, it was, I was finding these, I was beginning to think about them. I did some research. It, it's just that for me, it's about the, uh, this where we are now is about the adding veracity to elements and things that you're making. So it is provocative. And if and it's anything that's going to be taken away from this is a provocation, I want to provoke a conversation within society, not just this clique that are here and all that are here and the Venn diagrams, which are a, a repeating theme, the overlaps. There's so many different things that are involved with this work that we've created. Uh, I want to say we, there's you know so many people that have helped me and support me on the way. Um, but also um, with this, Emily uh, has made this. I'm referencing the Ulster Museum Waterloo blanket and also two others that I've seen, so-called military material and how they were used. Um, 
the islets there's referencing the i mean the whole thinking has gone back i've gone back to roman manipulation uh, there's the word manipulation where we've come from maniples and for, troop formations um but hang on a minute my assistant's got something for me here one second ah triangle flags thank you yeah triangle flags uh respecting items and uh how they're treated this is part of what i'm doing so um there's a whole thing about the uh the boy scouts in america and what they do with the flags very very interesting we'll come to that i'm going to put that over there i can't stop this fellow once he starts here we go another one these are there's two of those there like a little sandwich and these are just uh he's just picking up stuff as he finds them to show he wants he's keen for people to understand so the triangle of the flags okay okay he's got one more and then i'll get back to it sorry thank you there we go he's a good boy good lad right where were we um rosemary hello okay well i'm gonna crack sorry. on sorry sorry about that john i just muted myself again um yeah can you also say about the wonderful hand and the ambivalence of of that that you've thought about oh, he's just uh yeah you put the needle down yeah yeah yeah, yeah. bring it over now oh. so this this is my hand. So what I've done as part of this uh, research about um, where we are and how, I mean, identity is such an important thing. And part of this work is about a, a journey that I've gone through. And uh, I mean, it's like, follow this man as he goes through a journey. Uh, vexillology. It's been really interesting how um, I have actually gone back and made some self-realization. I'm a 55 year old man now. I've been at this for a while. There's been a couple of things that have really uh, made me understand my past and actually come to terms with it and come to terms with the recent past, but also the distant past as an individual, my place here and where am I? I'm always gonna be regarded as a blow-in with this accent. The thing being from Lurgan Tandra Gee and then leaving, I'm in this half space. This it's a very, very trendy word. This sort of liminal. I've, I've been in both sides, and there's navigating my understanding of uh, a free and open society for uh, abroad, for instance. I'm not going to name any country or anything, but then you come back here and the, the troubles that we've got and the the year. I mean, there's just years of pain that are still being held. Uh, and I think that hasn't been expressed properly. We've got all sorts of issues that have gone on, obviously, and the, the way that's been dealt with by our um, political system. But also, you know, I think we've got to we've got to wise up. We've got to own own, own up to yes, we've got to pass. But you've also got to say two side story and. Then some grey and black and white, you know, there's so many different shades and part of this idea came from an idea I had um, and in coming artwork um, called A uh, Hundred Shades of Red. And the idea was that these little hands, I was just, I asked all the artists in the, the vault that were I'm based, I just said, who's got red paint? I was getting these little um, hands uh, and I'm just looking at the symbolism one of these pieces of barbed wire is actually from the maze because I made a couple of trips, but it doesn't really matter. I know which one it is, or maybe not. Because this is all about communication, so there could be some false flag Im information within some of this, but also in what I'm going to talk about with the, the cloak and how we're going to present that and what we're going to do with that. Um, here we go. Thank you. He's a good lad. He, know, he, he understands. Um, so, yes. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Sorry, this is wild. Um, yeah, it is wild. Uh, and are you going to tour with this piece, or is this like the launch and the beginning of something huge with it? Well, I mean, it is the launch and it is the beginning, but uh, it's the beginning of something. Uh, this is a, a notebook 
um, from 2000 and I've got the date here, 2017. So if you notice the image on the front, this is exactly the same as this. So this, I first exhibited this piece in St. Martin's Church, very locally. Uh, I also, at the same time, did the, 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 the braids. I built up confidence within the community and understanding slowly but surely. And one of the ways I did that to gain confidence with the, uh, uh, the community for them to understand that, yes, I've been living there for as long as I had. They didn't really know the news of the photographer at all. I started then uh, very deliberately photographing uh, the kids playing on the street. Now, this is an important factor because um, I'd already done that previously 10 years more. I was working um, document, out and about documenting Mooching Photo Man. I'd done the whole, I was on Slug Road Tool and that was the beginning of the uh, internet and how things would be spread out. And I was a fairly quick early adapter to um, the dissemination of being able to put the information out and photographs quickly. And I knew that the archive, the British, sorry, the, the, the slugger, whatever I put out, the photo of the day, um, was being archived by the British Library. So I then took photos knowing, oh, I know I'm getting a bit throaty. Um, I took photos, cheers folks. Cheers. So he'll work that bell off yet. Um, so I was taking photos knowing that they were gonna be archived at, partly because uh, there's a record, a visual record, but also that website was um, recording the comments. So you could put a, you could put something up and there would be a discussion. The idea being is have come about, that, I suppose, how many comments would have the uh, what about tree or discuss and actually, and there's a whole thing about um, uh, online engagement, uh, play them, play the ball, not the man. So, you know, it's the same crack. So one of the guests we were going to have, unfortunately, um, uh, would have been uh, very helpful to bring another side to this angle because he's an, an American former Marine. Unfortunately, he couldn't join us. And I've lost... Uh, how am I doing so far? Was was I answering your question? Oh, yes, yes. But I, I, you were also telling me something about America the other day, about how... Uh, it was about retirement of flags in America and how this your piece relates all around the world, and it is certainly not just a local piece. And it's, no. if you could talk a bit more about that. Okay, well, there's, I mean, there's a couple of things. I mean, there's a very, very famous. You know, uh, we all know uh, the Healy quote. You know, you can't eat flags. Uh, you could, you can't eat a flag. Um, so I'm sort of riffing on that idea of uh, all the distance in gold uh, and the protection that would be protect that would be offered by a flag i mean it's a fabric it's not going to offer any so um turning that around and uh finding these these this island and the island cable tie they were key they're a key part of communication and a lot of this is about communication um so i really just started i dismantled it and i came up with this research uh, and part of it was like, who burns the most flags in the world? Uh, sorry, who burns the most stars and stripes? So you'd expect it to be jihadis or whatever. Um, it's actually um, the Boy Scouts of America. So they go around and they, they, they basically walk around looking at your porch to see a raggedy flag and they'll go knock your door, tell you this, give you a, give you a bollock and ask for, for money and then take the, uh, take the uh, flag from you. So they end up with these, and they do it, it's really interesting how it's dispersed because there's a, there's a protocol, uh, burn, bury, or fold, and there's, there's degrees of that. So burn, bury, or fold. Burn is if, if the flag was in an immediate danger you, and it's gonna be captured, you burn it. If you're in, you're not certain, you, you fold it and then bury it, or you fold it and then tuck it and carry it. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, it's very good. This is a circularity thing going on here. Uh, one second, I'm going to come to it. He's, he's ahead of himself slightly, but I'm going to come back to that. So the, the, the flag retirements, what happens is they'll, they'll organise these ceremonies and they'll have a pit uh, uh, burning. They'll have two scouts. Uh, it's an honour to be chosen. They'll have a pole and the flags are draped over the pole and then they walk over a fire. The flags go up. Everyone says a prayer, whatever, uh, and then they go and collect the ashes and they try and make sure that there's a minimum amount of um, 
uh, added material to create the fire. There's a whole ease of the layers and think if they're going correct, collect the ash. And then obviously there is the collect as well. And the woggles, um, but also the ashes, they'll collect them, put them into a, an empty cartridge case because it's America, crimp it, find a veteran and then go, thank you for your service. So there's a, the, this, this whole thing about burning the flag is very interesting. I've had conversations about that burn, bury and fold. Um, in fact, if you go to the new, um, uh, the Ilsa Museum, there's a, the, the recent addendum to the conflict and recent, um, I'd found a flag um, and I was having a conversation with uh, a couple of folk there, Karen, um, and um, he's moved on, so that's why I can't remember, but Karen, hi Karen. Um, Karen Logan. Uh, so we were having a conversation. I ended up giving them the, a, a triangle flag that I'd found. Um, they put that on display and talk about what is the, the flag protocol. Um, so from my point of view, it's very interesting to find something beside uh, Temple Mall Bus, photograph it, record it, and other ones, uh, and then say, look, I've got this. I've, I've, I gave it to them at Triangle, and they've actually presented it. They're showing it Triangle as I presented it to them. So it's sort of, oh, okay. Um, now we're talking about the circularity of it. So that whole conversation, that's an American bringing that idea in. But there's this whole, it's, it, there's a circularity to the problem, the issue. It's not, it, is it a problem? I'm, I, I see it as more of a, a barrier that needs to be resolved. I think it's, it could be easily stepped over and stepped around, even jumped over and embraced if there's a couple of ideas that I've got here about creating a communal a communal date or a communal activity that could be brought into retire, a retirement thing. And it, there, there is a precedent here um, with the retirement of the, old, the remembrance um, crosses um, they all get gathered up. We've all seen, we know them, the poppy, the, they have those wooden crosses and you sign them and leave them. So I'm led to believe that um, there's basically they're collected by the churches and then burnt quietly. But that, that idea of burning and commemorating and passing that on, um, I'm happy to be corrected, but I'm pretty sure that is already happening. It's just a conversation that people don't want to have. Yeah. <laughs> Put it down <laughs> the system and uh john you're a fantastic you you're great yes. at finding things in the street i mean so much of this is sort of what you observe just out in your everyday life you know and that's what sort of your scavenging mm. talents are sort of famous really well as a skinned artist you know you, all of a sudden you've got a subject that's has resonance and dissonance across where you're living. Um, uh, all of a sudden, you've got a free resource. So a couple of things with that. You, uh, for me, I, I've, um, I'm going to share a photo now. This is, this, this is a good time to share a photograph. And let me just do, this is me. Hey, I'm in the 21st century, kids. I'm down with the kids. Um, what did you think of that little video that I put out there, the uh, taster? Um, it was tongue in cheek. I'm finding this now. I do know what I'm doing, honest. Here we go. Okay. So, are you seeing that then? I hope you can. Yeah, we're seeing this. Yeah, it's good. Brilliant. So, um, this is about the treatment of the flag. So, and it's also about long term thinking it's part of the the issue i think we have within um community engagement community groups and the community sector broadly i think there's an issue over the system here. are you okay hello hello can you hear me yes hi john we can yeah. hear okay. you we can hear you so here's yeah so the very man himself how are you terry it's my brother, everyone. <laughs> right. Kira. So, Kira, my man. Right. Uh, do you want me to start? Or you were, you, you've led in on this. Yeah, so uh, I'm showing this photo. I'll drop the share screen. You've got your PDF. And 
Um, we'll go from that. This is, uh, I'll just briefly explain this. Terry got married. I, he invited me over to be best man. And just by the pure chance that I managed to get uh, my first international solo show in Auckland, uh, funding from the Arts Council um, to go over with my fledging, then fledging family uh, to be best man, exhibit. And while you went off honeymooning, I was invited to try um, for their uh, anniversary reunion from 1830 to what year was that, Terry? You were my uh, wedding day, you better get this right. Well, this is at uh, 2004. So it was 170th anniversary. Yeah. So, yeah. so now the share screen. And, uh, I am. Over to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Here he is. My brother, my man. High five. Kia ora, uh, kia ora toto, uh, no mai, hari mai, uh, ko takaronga te maonga, ko waitemata te awa, no uh, Tandrigi County Ama Oho, uh, no voucher toku Fano, no Terry toku Inoa. Kia ora all. That is what we call a mihi. Um, I thought it'd be useful to sing them. What I basically said there is, greetings all, my te, it is made in te reo Maori, the indigenous language of New Zealand, an official language of New Zealand. Just as a quick aside, um, there are two official languages of New Zealand, te reo Maori and sign language. English is not an official language. And right in front of you, you should be seeing the flag of New Zealand. No, that's actually yeah. the flag of Australia. Yeah. This is the official uh, flag yeah. of New Zealand. So that is a wee bit of background. And, and when John asked me to, to be in participate, I thought, well, it'd be to make a change from talking about tax um, for, uh, for that. And then you got thinking about uh, the symbolism of flags here in New Zealand, the symbolism of language. Language is actually very important here, te reo Māori. We, um, there's a great growth and it is now, there's a push to make sure that te reo is taught in all schools. But um, it was for a long time suppressed. The language was actively suppressed. And it's a beautiful language to listen to. John, you probably heard it when you were down at the Marae ad thing. You, you'll hear them making these introductions. The mihi is, as they call it, that's just introducing yourself. I'm very clumsy, I'm still working on it. And my te reo is nowhere near as fluent and uh, beautiful, lyrical as it is. But then they have these uh, kaitaias, uh, kaiatas, uh, uh, Waiata, sorry, where the, the, the women call you on to the marae. There's a lot of protocol. It's all been adopted into New Zealand and increasingly we adopt this. It's a, a distinct point of language. And the flag here, as you can see, is very common. A typical imperialist flag from the, or colonialist, actually, it's the phrase we're using now, is a colonialist flag. This was actually adopted in 1869. So that has been the flag of New Zealand it, 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 since 1869. Um, and was officially adopted in 1902. It predates the Australian flag by some 30 years. Um, but the, it's not the first official flag of New Zealand. This is. Um, and this is the United yeah. Tribes of um, uh, Confederate, we call it the United Tribes flag. And this is actually, uh, again, it's based on an English ensign, but it was adopted in 1835. Um, and that is the official, first official flag of New Zealand. So you will see the, this flag flying around, but the flag you will see more flying around has become politically very symbolic, is what we call the, this flag, a beautiful flag called the Tiro Aranga Tiratanga, absolute so sovereignty. Now this has been adopted, I think starting in 18, uh, about 1990, it comes in, maybe a bit earlier. Now Tiro Aranga Tiratanga is very important because in, on the 6th of April, uh, sorry, 6th of February, 1840, the various tribes of New Zealand, or Iwi as we call them, signed a treaty at Waitangi with the Crown. Now this was the, this um, was written, the treaty, Titiri, Titiri, as we call it, was written in English and in Te Reo. In Te Reo, the phrase that granted Maori ch uh, chiefs, um, Tino Rangatiratanga, absolute sovereignty, but that phrase does not appear in the English translation. Typical sly trick. 
than people would say. Mm. And it's been a source of uh, much to the controversy and uh, activism in, in New Zealand. Land was appropriated um, um, and frankly, a war was started in 1863 to grab the rich farmlands of the Waikato. And the there is a, uh, so Tino Rangatiratanga is a very important part of this. And these flags have become symbolism of Maori activism. Um, we have about one in, uh, so about 16% of the population as, um, uh, of New Zealand, which is currently now 5 million, um, is uh, of Maori descent. Uh, and that's the deal, the Whakapapa traces back. Um, the, uh, and increasingly, we have selected, we actually have, and we have had since 1860s, specific Maori only seats, you know, only Maori can vote in that. But, more, but gradually, Maori moving more into this, have moved into mainstream, but they were marginalized for a long time. And um, it wasn't until eight, 1975 that what we call the Treaty of Waitangi, the Waitangi Tribunal was set up and started hearing com uh, grievances from about land theft, all the sorts of appropriation and te reo, or tikanga, this is um, a Maori phrase uh, which refers to its cult, cult customs. Um, and te reo is a taonga, a, a, a treasure. So, the Treaty of Waitangi has, so the tri Waitangi Tribunal has started to make settlements of land, mostly crown land is handed back plus sums of money and more and more um, is an acknowledgement that Māori were appallingly treated. They still are down at the bottom of um, the statistics, you know, more, uh, although they're only 16% of the population, they make over more, up more than 40% of the prison population vastly overrepresented in all the wrong statistics. Mm. But the flag, this Tiro Rangatiratanga um, is an important flag and moving forward. It's caused a lot of controversy down the ages. But since 2010, on each the day, anniversary of Waitangi Day, the Tiro Rangatira flag flies across alongside the official flag on Auckland Harbour Bridge, for example. And it, it's increasingly you'll see it flown alongside other f flags, but mostly only around Waitangi Day. But I, I expect that that will gradually change. So we've been having a quiet flag debate in the background mm -hmm. for some time. Uh, always happy to take questions on this, but um, I will <laughs> confess, you know, I don't want to get uh, Maori Tikanga wrong on this. But an active to change the flag, this was a symbolism of Maori. This is this is saying this is who we are. This represents the treaty that you broke. Uh, if I'm putting, I'm probably, probably putting, maybe putting it simply, but it's symbol. So it it pushes bu buttons. And as I said, our debate has mostly been around language rather than flags. And here's 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 a good example of it. This is Hine Wafai uh, Mohi, who sang the national anthem in Te Reo Māori only before the All Blacks match against England in 1999 at the Rugby World Cup. Absolute ructions erupted. What is this? The players looked a bit puzzled because she just went into it. Um, but it didn't seem to do them any harm because they beat England 30 points to 16. So no one's worried too much about that. Um, but it caused absolute ructions about that. She took an enormous amount of flack from it. Um, there's a slight sad sequel to it in that is she was invited back again, this is at Twickenham, um, to sing for a game for the semi-final match against France. That didn't go so well because she only sang it in English. So, but the, here's the thing that's amazing. There's enormous eruptions about this, but from that point onwards, the All Blacks said, right, well, we'll just sing it in English, in Te Reo in English. So since then, that the, the national anthem is sung first in Te Reo and then in English. And now nobody seems to worry. More and more, it's gone from the mumble, mumble, who we are, and voices starting to kick in when the English person is more and more people are getting uncomfortable singing Te Reo. But it's, that's it's interesting. That, yeah, sorry, sorry John. To interject a bit, but that's interesting about the, um, um, the <clears throat> I've lost you, John. There was a whole thing about the, the foreshore and the, uh, didn't they put a claim yes. in? About yes, now this, uh, well, actually a slight, slight sidetrack, but one of the major issues that came up, the part of the Waitangi Tribunal 
the question was raised as to whether Maori might have a right well. to make a claim against the foreshore in that. And the courts, the, um, the high court said, yes, they could. And that uh, was a split that caused a, a massive controversy because um, that was coming up to a, a, an election time. Um, an elections feature on this point and it, it, it caused it was the last it was a real touchstone point because it caused a split in the Labour Party. Um, Maori vote Labour um, mostly but with the advent of what we call um, MMP multi-member proportional uh, proportional representation system um, Maori have proved to be the most tactically astute voters in in the country. Because they want you to be vote. bloody heard. <laughs> Sorry? They want to be heard. That's why. Well, well, that's right. And uh, and what happened was that uh, traditionally Maori, Maori, coming back to what I said, we have separate Maori seats. So traditionally, mm -hmm. those have been owned, those have been held by Labour. But with the MMP uh, advocate uh, entry of MMP, first something called New Zealand First, which is actually quite nationalist, oh. but it grabbed the first um, five of the first six, uh, five of the six Labour uh, Maori seats in the 1996 election went to New Zealand first. They lost them all okay. in 1999. Right, Terry, uh, I think we've got Paddy Huey um, from Liverpool is going to join in. It would do, do a wee three-way. Paddy, have you got a, a question there, maybe? Sorry, I'm, doing, I'm being all Nolan. You'll know uh, what. How how well did it add? How how well did it end for uh, the whoever pushed their referendum? What happened at the end of the referendum? Obviously, said no. Well, I'm, co I'm coming on to that. So okay. um, sorry, I just sorry. thought I'd lay down the background because I said when you sit down and analyze this, language is the key thing. Oh, yes. So yeah. um, the the foreshore debate caused a split in the Labour Party, and since then there's always been a Maori party. It's back in Parliament again, but. Um, there's a nationalist, there was a pushback by a group called Hobson's Pledge. Hobson, Governor Hobson was a man who signed a treaty on behalf of the Crown back in 1840, oh. which is a really reactionary group. But they, um, right. so there's the New Zealand, I meant to say this actually, is, um, is a mixture. There is this liberal scene that people, most of the world sees actually in Jacinda Ardern, voting yeah. for gay marriage and the rest. But there's also a very, very conservative base group around here. And this, the backlash to Hinnifai's Mohis was a good example. But moving on, enter John Key, Prime Minister <laughs> uh, of New Zealand. <laughs> and there he is. He's holding up the, the Australian flag. The deliberate, he decides for what best reasons best known to himself. Um, Key's from the National Party, yeah. right-wing group, right-ish, centre-right. Um, he and I are actually, uh, anyway, we're, um, no, he, he was New Zealand, one of New Zealand's um, most, he's an interesting character. He actually is very rich. He was a banker um, um, and founded, he was at uh, Goldman Sachs, came back and went into parliament with the sole expression of becoming prime minister, which he did in uh, November 2008. So highly popular, um, he'd won, our, our electoral term is three years. So he'd won a re-election in 2011. And then again, coming up to 24, 20, before the 2014 election, he proposed and promised a referendum on changing the flag. Because he said, you know, this is ridiculous. Um, I couldn't find the flag in particular, but there were a couple of incidents where he'd been overseas and the Australian flag had been behind him, not the New Zealand flag. Easy yeah. mistake to make. You learn quickly. It's got the big white um, yeah, star big, over here, right? Because I brought one, I brought a flag over last time I visited you, and you went, "That's an Australian flag." Because I'd brought one I'd found to do something in New Zealand and bring it, a flag found at an interface area with writing and whatever. Take it to New Zealand, give it a nice ending. Well, you know that was wrong, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, I think I think that was used as toilet paper. Anyway. Oh, now here we go. Terry. We, 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 yeah. Our Australians call us cousins, but they treat us rub like rubbish. Uh, seriously. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, supposed to be so, bringing a nice idea in. <laughs> They'll be bringing that. Up. Come on, cool, chill. Um, so here's the fly timeline that played out. He set up a, a flag consideration panel. Now, the group a grouping of this had no one with an active design background. It had some people looking back on it. I'm saying, who the hell is Stephen Jones other than that arsehole who writes the Sunday rugby about rugby for the Sunday Times? Um, 
and it was some <laughs> councillor way down in Invercargill. Uh, the background on this, there was sort of there's a tech company founder. There were plenty of sports people because the key was saying, well, we use the silver fern as a sports very, very thing, um, and that actually is a, a bit of a ridiculous theme. As is well known, the All Blacks play in black, and most New Zealand I'm teams listening. play a variation of black or white. Um, so, for example, our cricketers are black caps. The um, the soccer team, the football team, is the All Whites. They play in white, and they're variation, but they all wear silver fern. It gets a bit ridiculous these variations. Um, but the flag consideration panel was so key was going to drive it down. We need it to adopt the silver fern. Um, then they, they, they called for um, a consultant. Those 10,292 design suggestions. There's a very funny clip on, from John Oliver about the whole thing, including the amazing lazy Kiwi flag. I'm not going to put those up here. It's a bit of a distraction. But the process was flawed from the outset. And it was trying to be driven down a particular agenda. And I think this is something which would be obviously very relevant coming from Northern Ireland. You know, you've got to take this step very carefully because it becomes culturally important. It is culturally important. So what happened in, uh, they yeah. produced a long list of 40 designs was then shortlisted to four. And a one of the better designs was off that list of four. So um, a, a Green MP said, hey, we need a change on this. And uh, we, want, we want that added to the list. So the idea was we then have a runoff of uh, of these five would go into a referendum, we'd choose that one and there would be a runoff against the current flag. So the first referendum chooses a runoff and then there was a second in December and then a second referendum. The whole thing cost about $26 million, um, which you know, penny pinches are always complaining about. I mean, I think the idea of putting it out to consultation and maybe putting it to a referendum is not a bad idea in itself, but it's always going to be very fraught because it's going to get captured by politics. Terry, I love John, you. Yep. I love you, but you've gone in deep here. <laughs> I'm going deep, but I'm going to finish quickly and I just sort of show this. So these are the five I'll flags finish. that went up for it. As you can see, three are variations of the same theme, the silver fern. One is a koru, which is we see, playing. and there's this one on the bottom left, the red peak was my favourite. Um, that was the one that got added. Key wanted one of the two. He wanted the one on the top left, the Lockwood design. The one designer submit was chosen for two of the four designs initially. The one on the top left and one on the bottom right. Um, right the, the top left one looks as, as you see, it's an amalgamation of the silver fern and the current flag. But when it went up against the current flag, it got thrashed. Um, the voter turnout was about 48%, just over 48, one and a half million people voted. Then the second referendum, they came out en masse. And this one got 43%, which won. Um, but the other one went, it got 55%. Now, politics really got in the way here because the Labour Party decided to try and score a cheap hit against John Key, take him out of the picture or just in there. And that's uh, that's the real lesson, I guess, for yourselves on this, how this process can be managed. Um, I voted for this flag. I didn't like it at all, but I voted for change. That was the way I took it. Um, but in the end, it was comfortably thrashed, and we'll probably sit back. We, it'll be another 20 years before this comes up, except maybe when the Queen dies, we may see something there. Uh, turnout was very high. That's 67% voted. I mean, that's a higher turnout than goes out in the American elections, by the way. But anyway, here's a coda for this, and I'll sign off from here and if there's any questions. John Key, he resigned on the 4th of December 6, 2016, after losing the referendum. We still don't know why. He would have won comfortably if he'd stood again in, in 2017. So that's our story. It's interesting. I think for us, language is the Tereo manager. When I think about it, the language, Tereo is very important. But the flags, you can still see people are very attached to it. We get the old arguments, well, I fought and died for the flag, which is not an argument I accept uh, uh, with soldiers. Um, as I say, we're our debate. When when is that going to go on? That's quietly simmering away in the background. I think ultimately you might see the Tiro Rangatiro Tanga flag is too controversial, but it's a nice design. It, it is very organic to New Zealand, and I'd like to see that possibly become our major our flag. So that's it from me. Um, back to you, John. Thank you. Harry, Kiora. thank you so much. Kiora, my man, thank you so so much. Um, I wanted to ask you a quick question just about that photo that uh, I shared earlier um, uh, yep. from Makatu and the significance.
because we obviously we went down. I'm going to run through this quickly because I'm gearing up. This is I'm going to show you the cloak where we are and the thinking and all the rest of it. Who is this? So this flag, John. This part. This is from Makatu. So yes, yeah. So Makatu. So when I told you that I was going there, I think you were a little bit. Hey, how did you manage that? And I explained that Paul Tapsell was the head of the Maori, and I'd met him talking about my work with the travellers, and we hit it off talking about stray dogs because some of the photos that I was showing him, uh, and that was my first visit to stay, stay with you, I think. Yes, um, you did. Yep. Yeah, so we, we had this whole thing about stray dogs and clicked it. He eventually came and saw me, stayed uh, with Reg and Paul when we were together, and then uh, when you were, I told him that you were getting married, he then said, well, sure, come over and we'll sort it. And it turned out that you got married, went on your honeymoon, and then we went and uh, watched the unveiling of this flag, which was from 1830, 34, the family reunion. We were welcomed onto the Lurai. We did the whole, it's hanging, uh, the I'm nose to nose, you're breathing each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we did all that and we were there and part of it and sleeping in the meeting house as part of it. And then the, the following week, I did an artist talk in the art station for the work Island Men Ghosts, my first international solo show. If you've got a print of that, you're lucky. Um, and actually this cloak is based on that idea of using, as I had them sticking photos onto canvas, sail canvas. This isn't Belfast sail canvas because the chandlers are closing down. That's another story. Terry, when Paul uh, Tapsell, um, whose relatives and family this was, when he uh, stood up and accepted and said, uh, right, these are the photos and talked about it, what, what was your impression? Oh, gosh. <sighs> Crikey. That's... Because um... I just remember that, that you said to me, what have you done? Because the hangi was so long, the way he, he was holding his forehead, you know, the, the way you, you breathe. Yeah, the hongi, the hongi. Well, the hungi is a traditional greeting where you draw in each yeah. other's breath. You go nose to nose. You sometimes see it after a rugby match. You'll see some yeah. play that some of the All Blacks do a hungi with one of their opponents, and that's so you draw in each other's breath. It's a, a sharing. It's an extremely intimate moment. Um, it's a, a mo gesture of great respect, in, in my view. I have I've never had a hungi. I've been here in twenty eight years. And that's that doesn't oh. happen. So I think it's something that. I see as of very significance. Really, I mean, yes, I mean, but but see, John, I live in the very white part of New, uh, Auckland, Tamaki well, Makoro, um, well, and so I mean, because I'm no longer involved with rugby, my so uh, con connections with the Pacifica and Maori communities are quite diminished now. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I've not been invited onto Marae um, uh, uh, officially uh, anything. So that's all part of that. It's uh, you know clearly what you'd done is you'd made a great impression, you'd work you'd you'd treat, been treat, treated to it with respect and not, not surprising given your work with the travellers and understood, um, um, it, it, it was you you were there to listen, um, and they accepted that and so that was a sign of mark of respect uh, by by Paul, um. And, and that's the thing is sort of the thing you're trying to say. You can't just go crashing in and saying, right, we need to change the flag, which is what Key tried to do. It, you've got to yeah. take people with you um, as well. And it wasn't, yeah, po sad politics got in the way um, in, in there because I think it is ridiculous that we're New Zealand here is 12,000 miles away from London. Um, and we have a flag which is of a, a I've probably put it bluntly and be controversial, watching Brexit, the, the union is disintegrating. You know, and I'm not bombshell. No, I, I <laughs> better leave it. <laughs> but yes, so uh, Paul Paul's not suggestion there. I think it's very important. Thank you, John. It, Kira. It's Paddy. Kira, stay stay around, bro. Um, I'm gonna turn that off. Cannot so oh, right, I'm gonna oh, there we are. Is Back to you, John. Around? Is Paddy around now? Yeah, I'm here. Paddy, what a pity. What's a crack? <laughs> uh, Saturday night, oh, you'll know that fist. That yes. <laughs> uh, Saturday night, I'm standing wearing a bulletproof vest. Ce n'est pas un gilet pas mal. A cloak of loyalty. It's not finished, it's not complete, but it is and it isn't. And this is part of what I wanted to talk about. Very quickly, 
Barry, because uh, uh, my garrulous and erudite brother uh, has sort of run on. Uh, really wanted you to talk about your view of uh, what I've been doing in the community, because uh, and, and what Terry said there as well talks about approach and how approach within community engagement and art and uh, communication and photography and citizen journalism, how uh, I maybe helped and assisted your uh, teaching of media studies over in Liverpool. Well, I, I've been in Liverpool since 1995 and I've been teaching in the university mm -hmm. sector since about uh, 2003, 2004 and previous to that I worked on all of Trinity Mirror or what is now called Reach PLC's local and regional newspapers here. I've done a bit of work for uh, a couple of radio stations as a journalist and I've been obviously I've been away from Northern Ireland for a long time and I, I started doing a PhD in uh, or PhD. I used the H in two different uh, pronunciations <laughs> there just because we know the cultural wasteland. Right, that was that the Irish just dropped in, the unions collapsing and then went away again, like I, <laughs> apropos of nothing. Like, um, and I, I was looking specifically at the use of, I was fascinated by the use of the internet uh, uh, by political groups and marginalised political groups in Northern Ireland. I was particularly interested in Republican groups, and that's what my book turned out to be when I when I when I uh, when it was released a couple of years ago. Paperback still. What there. Was that book? Which one was yeah. that? Because you've done a couple, haven't you? Oh, no, there you go. I'm writing one of the info yeah. text. Shinner's dissos. Uh, let's keep hawking. Twenty quid, and you can get it for sixteen or thirteen in some places. You don't mind giving Jeff Bezos some more money. But I was just about looking at how Republican groups used the net, and yeah. what I thought, and so uh, in two thousand and eight. There was a, I don't know if you remember, you will remember because you took photographs of it, there was an RIR homecoming uh, and there was all oh, kinds yeah. of controversy over this homecoming parade for troops yeah. and one of the groups that was involved in protesting against the IRG, I was kind of following online because they had a very active online space and it was through that that I found your work in on Slugger and okay, yeah. I'd, I'd seen that you'd, done, you'd taken pictures of Anthony Gormley statues which are literally just at the bottom of this street the beach is just the um, and what I what I saw with your work was um, particularly the Moochin work uh, on, on Slugger was is that the net was giving people a chance to see the unseen or that which wasn't being revealed by the mainstream media that I worked for. And I know the word mainstream media or the term mainstream media is quite lame, but my point is that in in terms of professional newspapers. Um, there, there, there is the kind of sectarianized kind of quotidian press that you know the Irish news is one yeah. community. There's no one. nuance. Yeah, and then the national press, you know, tries it might will try and ignore as much as it possibly can the kind of fissures, whether they're political or whether they're among other forms of identity. And I was getting the sense that the stuff that you were doing, the stuff that your glamorous assistant was doing on Slugger, were was <laughs> giving me a sense of the unseen that I even when I lived in Belfast at university. I didn't get access to these places. And I thought that yeah. was, I think that's tremendously important within the concept, the context of flags, because flags are about marking territory and trying to capture visually an essence of of the uh, of a people or a group or a territory or representation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um yeah. I, I, I think with what happened, the thing I've and Steve, I'm doing some work with uh, Dr. Steve Baker at Ulster University. And one of the things we'd always remarked was like, you know, what happened to Northern Ireland's subculture? In 1968, when the rest of the world was exploding in along identity lines, and we had women's rights and gay liberation and animal rights and the green movement and, and all of those expressions that we saw in the underground press and on pirate radio. And, you know, I kind of, we kind of, it's, in one sense, the kind of boomer representation yeah. of history, how we were radical and changed the world. Terry Hood has been going, but that's not more of the late. Yeah, but, but I think, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, some I, of the old boys. Go on ahead, mate. Sorry, go on ahead. Because so, we've uh, been through a lot of the archives and we're trying, you know, the, the Northern Ireland political archive at the at the uh, Linen Hall Library is a remarkable thing and anybody can have yeah. any access to it, you know, and you, you walk in and you open a box and what you'll find is like a dinner ticket to an, uh, an IRSP dinner. You think, mm -hmm. what does yeah, that capture? Yeah. Why is it unseen? 
but it's still political it in the Northern be, Ireland sense. I know somebody who is part of the business community went to a fundraiser DP, and I've got this lovely little uh, enamel uh, badge of Gibraltar, obviously with the flag. But it's with that, that 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 ephemera, those little uh, pieces, and part of what I'm doing with this is actually making a statement going, right, you know what, this is where we are. You know, I've made a bulletproof vest. I've come up with this idea. And ce n'est pas un gilet pas mal. It is not a bulletproof vest. Yeah. I love the Surrealists. Magritte is my, uh, I mean, Magritte okay. is my favorite. This is not. So I love that reversal. So this, what I'm wearing, what is it? This is the start of something. I know we were talking about it very, uh, uh, it was touched upon by uh, Rosemary. The idea that I had is from, I, I, it should have been done four or five years ago. I actually got a bursary from the friends of uh, F.E. Mac Williams uh, um, to go down. It was the Mourner Crozier, and it was the second one. I'd worked with Mor Mor Mourner. Unfortunately, uh, the way it worked out, I just did, I didn't have the materials to hand. Um, so I ended up just doing, I remember I had the, the studio and I was doing basically triangle flags laying them out there's a lovely grass embankment and being able to just configure them as i wanted in the sunshine yeah. and not worry about some fella over my shoulder and i'm in monaghan doing this so then the, the gardener we're in the uh, where the gardener walks past and i'm in this studio and i basically at the time i was looking at making uh kites um so i was looking for the shapes of the the irish shape of you know the wings, that sort of idea. Mm -hmm. Now I'm taking the cloak off. Quick release um, cable ties. Very, very handy. The cloak's been gathered. This is another design. And I'm going to come to this design uh, in a minute. But basically, walking, uh, working in um, the Tyrone Guthrie, I always flag to this guy. Cheers. Now I know a fellow. Would, I know plenty of folk wouldn't be happy with all these flags. Now, you know, you, you're getting this. There's always that questioning about what you're doing. You've always got to understand and know. And this process and what I've gone through here over 10 years, I've reduced it and reduced it. Looked at the, these are interconnected. These are potentially two of these are one flag. Um, I take them off. We've got details here. I'm referencing the King's shilling. Again, this is over the heart. So there's going to be a little patch. So if you're wearing this and it looks as if it's going to kick off, you rip it off and show <laughs> ready for it. it offers no protection but it's also if you know your sectarianism the h's and all the rest of it the the, the there are some letters that can go around that because it represents so I'm, I'm i'm playing with those the vernacular the vernacular is around us now this is it's something accepted. i want to ask you about um, uh, this is something i want to ask you yeah. about the turn towards the vernacular which is the things that really inspired me in, in, in looking at community journalism, because I was working on newspapers that were... That, uh, sorry, that you were, broke it up there. Sorry, I, I was working on newspapers that were closing. So it, it was coming to the end of an era, and I lived yeah. in a, a place called Crosby, well, where the beach where Hampton Gormley statues are. And I worked on the Bootle Times during the, the dock strike in 1995. And lots of the papers that I worked on were closed. And I was thinking, who's going to represent those communities? Those communities... Will the next come to replace, you know, old forms of? And, 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 but I, no, I mean, that's the work really that you doing, but, but I particularly think that the TTV stuff that you did in capturing the subcultures of Belfast was capturing a kind of vernacular that didn't need to be framed within the news values. And I particularly felt, and since then, I've worked in communities like Norris Green and Croxford setting up a uh, a community newspaper. We're doing work at the minute um, with the uh, Scotty Press, which is the the newspaper from Scotland Road, which is okay. area just outside the city centre, very, very big area for immigration. It's the oldest community newspaper in Britain. It's 50th anniversary this year. And all of the work that I've done has been inspired by the work that you did on Slugger and the work that I saw at the, that, that the, um, that Mackers and people did on the blanket. That, you know, you don't have to agree with what these people are writing, but it's the act of writing. It's the act of artistic expression. It's the act of taking pictures. is the most important it's element. conversation. It's a conversation. Yeah, I mean, these things, these are eyelets, but I mean, I can basically, I wanted, I found that eyelet and I wanted to make a hand. I actually wanted to go in right. How many, try to work out how I could make physically 
a hand. So that if that's a little finger, I worked, I worked, it took me a while, but I worked it out that it's basically there's I need 10 of these to otherwise it crimples. You've always got to have an even number uh up until 10, otherwise it, it it's a difficulty. I've made some balls, these things have there's an idea. Um and then from that it went to this big bad boy here this cross you can't really so my able assistant will run his hands down it there we go this cross <laughs> is called a vexillum the vexillology there he is that's him he's no that's enough of him we don't need to see him over him um the symbolism i mean the, the whole thing about vexillology comes from the latin uh the a vexillum which means a little sail and it was basically carried i'm looking for it here now so this would be the approximation of it. Broadly speaking, they would have been a, a javelin with a crossbar and a little, and it was a it was to denote uh, two formations, uh, uh, two maniples, and it's where we get the word manipulation from. Uh, and the first and second posterior, so the the, the second maniple, were the, they were the trainees, and you work your way through the ranks to get to the first maniple. The 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 general would send them away, and to know that this. They'd gone the right way, he'd see the spear tip. So they're getting battered. So we'll send in the boys, the first man up will know that have exactly the same little flag, little sails. They'd go away, but on top of it, instead of the spear tip, they would have the hand. And it's where we manipulate moving movement. Uh, and on that base, on that that idea here, uh, I think there's a yes, where is that Mobius? There's a Mobius here, somewhere here. It, you can't get the stuff that should have been here now i mean <laughs> thank you get away Fuck. right um very joking we're running out of time so i'm going to do this very quickly the mobius is about the circularity of things it's a very simple thing this is just three and i can turn them in and around i would propose there's a couple of things we're going to come out with now first thing is you should have two of these interlocked up in Stormont instead of that big lump, because you take the rough with the smooth, and if you if they were both exactly the same, if you know a mobile, you should turn it. There'll be times where they'll be clashing when it were running around, and it, there'll be times when it, with the two of them were leaking and they would be smooth. For the cloak, which people are going to think is an anti-climax, and this bulletproof vest, Basically, we are throwing it out to the public to say, we want your 100 hands. We want 100 hands, no bigger than a, a cigarette packet, size-wise. We're going to wear it. This here, I should also explain, the, the cable ties, when they're clipped, they basically they cut your hands. So this is based on the idea of uh, the Waterloo uh, or military materials where the fallen in the 18th century Peninsula Wars, all that sort of, they had really good felted woolen coats, so they were collected. They were able to make blankets and quilts, similar to this checker plate pattern. There's only about a hundred of them left in the world, and I've seen three of them, two in New Zealand and one in the Ulster Museum. There, we want to make this something that isn't just about me, because yeah, I'm the smartest that's thought of these islets and interconnecting and a way, as another way of communicating. I think, uh, it's worth having a conversation. We're in this centenary year. I've cast my hand to go on top of the cross. This is going to be my maniple, the first maniple. I've got a, a, a staff that has been, uh, uh, there we go, that long piece of wood, you know the one. I have a staff that is two meters, two and a half meters tall, foraged. There it is, there it is. He's going to get past with it. How long is that? That's going to be the end. We're going to have a little flag that's going to represent it. But I'm asking people to send, if they wanted to, to participate, send in a hand. And the idea is if we get 100, then we can basically mark up the uh, the yearly births and dates. That's it. And it's a representation of, so you send us your little hand. We'll attach it to the, the cloak. And there's other embellishments. There's an ongoing process with this. It's an ongoing conversation because it's out here now. I've finessed it. We, I put that video out, which I was a little bit worried about. Um, so far, 
as the film company is called, I want to get nominated, not kneecap. Let's have a conversation. I think there's scope. We're old enough. It's time to do it. I think long-term engagement within the community is another thing that needs to be done. Um, thankfully, I've managed to not mention some of the worst things that I was going to rant about. Um, and uh, we were question and answer if we can get one. Well, can I can I say something, John? Just uh, quickly. Yeah, who's this? Who's this? Uh, it's Peter. Peter O.C. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know didn't recognise me. Didn't recognise me. Paddy, um, fascinating to hear you're taking things. And uh, I know John a long time, thankfully, uh, or maybe unthankfully. But uh, you make sure when you, you're chatting to John that the next time you're over, me and you can hook up. I'm from Newry originally, is, and I've been. What are you talking about questions. That's not a question. What are you? Oh, no, that is a question. The question is the question is the party. Because this uh, week we've seen Boris, um, you know, promote the flag in the UK, you know, and I don't like flags, full stop, don't like flags. But do you think what's happening to the, to what has happened to the flags in Northern Ireland in terms of what I would see as the disrespect shown to them and the symbolism that they're supposed to represent, do you think that's going to be replicated in the UK now or in England particularly? Now that you know that every time, every time the you know, every time we've looked at the COVID thing, there's been two Union Jacks freshly laundered every day. And it just I just find it gut wrenching, gut wrenching that they're using that symbolism for the wrong so, for the wrong reason. That's a really interesting so point. The question Peter, is, Paddy, are we going to get the replication? Sorry, well, Paddy, if you just let me that's the only thing I recognize, second. John. That's the only flag I recognise. This is the only flag oh, I recognise. Oh, okay. Now then, uh, hold on, hold on. Maybe Red, I don't want on. to talk to you, Paddy. Maybe I don't want to talk to you. Okay, that's okay because Ter Terry and uh, John are from the wrongs. They they're almost down. God love them for the from Bally Lisk and Tanzer Gee. That's almost <laughs> down, like you know what I mean. Well, I've always been down. <laughs> Sorry, John. Can I just say that on that point, Peter's just said. I think the problem, one of the things is, is that we that the flags often give you a homogenous sense of who and what people are. I live in Liverpool, yeah. if you remember, uh, although I'm, my family, my wife's family are all blues, uh, there's one thing that was flown on the cop, which was, we're not English, we are Scots, is that the sense of the, the, the United Kingdom, it, 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 if you come to Liverpool, there's a really interesting otherness about the place, and that's not just Scots essentialism, is that there's a sense that Liverpool is a bit like Marseille, or it's a bit like Glasgow, or it's a bit like you know those the, the European Union called them cities on the edge around 2008, and I think that this idea of trying to politicise the flag here as a means of maintaining the union isn't going to play in certain cities, particularly in cities and particularly cities that voted to remain in the European Union. That's where those culture wars are happening in England. Sorry, John, go on ahead, mate. No, I mean it's an interesting point because um, some of my work is about long-term study, so I would revisit yeah. the same place and Peter. Uh, help me. So I'm going to show these. I was presented them earlier very quickly, this idea of revisiting uh, and watching the decay. So what I did, I call these photo flags. Uh, and I basically went and photographed uh, the flag in the situ. Uh, it's just the advertised material, it's Stormont Street. And I went back the same more or less every year. So that was 2014, 2015, it's smaller, I've changed it. And I got these made specifically to show the deterioration. And that's, that's that the two, so uh, 16, 15, 14 in the, and then in the, I decided I jumped, I had to go and take it before it was gonna be taken. And this is it here. So this is actually, if you look at this here, is the remnant of that flag. Uh, and there was a couple of other flags I didn't know. There's a seam and the rope. I then, in the whole circularity thing of it, where it comes back round and round and round, and there should be some molten, uh, where is that uh, tire stuff? Anyway, no. Circularity, circularity goes back round again. I actually hung the photo flags on, the, the rope that I'd retrieved. 
I also made an exhibition of these. These are actually metal, well, I said made an exhibition. I make an exhibition of myself all the time. This is a piece I use to, uh, with some uh, small bespoke uh, up. mahogany and walnut uh, palettes. So I basically took them as still photos and messed with the scale and perspective and reusing them. But basically, what I want to do is I want people to contact me with their hundred, their their the hand for the hundred year uh, our centenary, and let's see if if there's traction in it because we've got it to where we are. I have this is an idea that I had. I, I we've put out of the cloak. We've got the frame of the cloak, and both myself and Emily want to make sure that what we do put out, we've got so many different things that are multi layered, and we're going to run out of time. We're what's ten past. Any questions from the audience other than Peter, who's me, who's me mate? <laughs> Hi, John. Unfortunately, we have run out of time and we have to move on to another. <laughs> we have another um, talk going on very shortly, so we're going to have to move on. But thank you very much to everyone for their participation and for yourself and your brother for that wonderful talk. Thank you, John. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Great talk. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you, John. Well done. <laughs> Harry Mai. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone that's uh